Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how I set up my cars for circuit racing inside Forza Horizon 5. So first we're going to go into upgrades and tuning. I'm using the 2018 McLaren Senna just because I love that car and I've already done it. We're going to go into custom upgrade. Conversion, I haven't put an engine in it at all because there's no swap for this one. This is an all-wheel drive car that I've converted it to. So you can use rear wheel drive if you want or all wheel drive, but I find that all wheel drive gives you a lot more grip when driving around corners. If you just want to use a rear wheel drive car, then this will work for it, but I'm doing an all wheel drive car today, so that's what we're doing. So we're going to go back into the engine. You're just going to put everything on it to max out the power as much as possible. I've got 1,180 horsepower. You don't have to put everything in it to max out the power, but that's what I've done. I want it the most amount possible to make it as fast as possible to go around a track. So everything here is an on race. Then we're going to go into platform and handling. So I've got stock springs and dampeners on this because otherwise I've just got off-road springs and dampeners and then drift and I don't want to use either of those. So we're just going to use stock in this. If you've got ones for race, then put those that on it. Then we're going to go into weight reduction. I put weight reduction on it to get rid of the weight, to make it as light as possible, to make it as fast as possible. Transmission. It has a stock transmission in it because in here it's got 7-speed transmission, 8-speed, 10-speed, and nine speed what you want to do is you want to put a race transmission on it which allows you to then edit the gear ratios inside the car i'll show you that later in the tuning then we're going to go into drive line we're going to put a race drive line in it then we're going to put a race diff in it and then you want to put anti-roll bars in it front and rear which i don't have but you will have on yours you want to change the anti-roll bars to front and rear make them into race we're going to go into tires and rims and then we're going to go into slick race tire compound that's what we're going to use gives you the most amount of grip look if we look down there at handling slick tire compound gives you the most amount of grip we're going to go on the front and make the front tires as wide as possible then on the rear we're going to make the rear tires as wide as possible as well the reason we're making the tires as wide as possible is to give you the most amount of contact on the ground of the tire which gives you the most amount of grip before it lets go and has no grip around the corner which is no use whatsoever for driving around a corner as fast as possible so then we're going to go into the the rim style you can put whatever you want on rim size you can do whatever you want there you don't have to have them massive or tiny just keep them somewhere in between aero and performance aero and appearance sorry we're going to change the front bumper and put the race front bumper on it which allows you to unlock front bumper downforce tuning then on the rear we're going to put one on the back as well to allow you to unlock rear wing downforce tuning we need both of those so that is the basic upgrade that I'm going to do on this car. On yours it might be a bit different because this one doesn't have as much as other cars, but it's pretty much the same. Then we're going to go into tuning and we're just going to go through this really quickly of how to set it up for a race car on a circuit to drive as fast as possible round corners. So tyres, you don't want it as low as possible or as high as possible. So if you have it as high as possible, you've got less contact of the tyre on the ground because there's more air in it. And then if you've got as low as possible, you've got too much tire on the ground and not enough air in it, that it becomes unstable. So you need it as low as possible before it comes unstable to give you the most amount of grip. So we're using 24.5 and 25.5 on the rear. The reason I'm doing that is because I want the front to be more grippy than the rear because we're turning in with the front. Into gearing, I've got mine right down here. Look, So I don't know where this one started, but you need it to be... Don't, you don't want to adjust any of these really. The reason you don't want to adjust any of these is because they're set up perfectly fine to start with. If you find that you, you want to go in then you play with them, that's a whole other video that I've got to do. So we're just going to adjust the final drive. Look at the bottom right hand side, there's a, there's a graph there. If you hire the final drive, you can see the graph takes the top speed of the car down and now it's 135 miles per hour that's going to be top speed. Well that's no use for us whatsoever. So if you lower it, it will take the speed right up and what are we now we're pushing 246 miles per hour the likelihood that i'm going to be driving around a track we lower it well we are all the way to the bottom we lower it all the way to the bottom at 245 miles an hour it's not going to happen so you don't want to lower it that hot that low you want to be somewhere around there to give it the best of both worlds so that is a basic for the final drive alignment We'll, go, we'll start at the bottom. On the caster, you want, a, you want to run as much high caster as possible to allow you to run negative camber as least as possible on the front and rear. The reason we do that is because if you run negative camber, it means 
the bottoms of the tires are kicked outward so when you're driving in a straight line not as much tire is touching the, the floor which reduces drag and makes you go faster and then when you go around a corner it pushes the weight onto that tire which then pushes that tire up straight so then you've got the most amount of tire touching the ground when you're cornering if you have it on zero or you have positive camber it will do the opposite so you have more tire on the ground when you're driving straight and then when you go around a corner you'll have less of the tire on the ground so you can check this by using your telemetry but at the moment it won't let me set my telemetry buttons up so i can't check my telemetry when i'm driving so i can't do that in the video for you then we've got toe in and toe out so the reason I'm, i run a tiny bit of toe on the toe out on the front and rear is because it gives you better turning response and that's what we want better turning response anti-roll bars so in a race car you have it set up as stiff because you want to drive around a track with as least body roll as possible to make it go as fast as possible you don't want to be going for a corner and have the car swaying from side to side it needs to be flat to the ground as low as possible to reduce as much drag as possible and go as fast as possible so we set it up quite stiff for both of them i always have the front stiffer than the rear springs i do exactly the same front stiffer than the rear ride height depth all the way to the ground dampening you don't need a lot of rebound stiff stiffness or bump stiffness you don't need a lot of rebounds on that or bump stiffness you can have it stiff and stiff and then stiff and stiff again because you're on a racetrack so the likelihood that there's going to be a lot of bumps that you're going over is not really that high i know we're driving in horizon 5 but you're going to be racing on the road so when you're doing road racing there's not going to be a lot of bumps you're driving on tarmac you want it to keep it as smooth as possible you don't want it bouncing all over the place like a boat on water then we're going to go into aero i always push mine up a little bit for cornering and then i push the rear up for cornering as well just a little bit more there just like that i want better cornering rather than more speed because i want to go through the corners as fast as possible that's where you'll make up most amount of time if you find that people are pull, pulling away from you on the straight then you can lower this down to speed again and lower it to the left a little bit or you can go back into gearing and you can change your final drive down a bit to give you a higher top speed but this is the way i've set it up braking you want to keep it in the middle as much as possible to distribute the brake in between the front tires and the rear tires which which means all tire will break at the same time giving you four amount of brake rather than if you push it all the way to the rear you've only got two tires braking rather than four you want to keep it as much as possible in the rear you can fine tune adjust this by moving it if you look on the left hand side you've got braking distance 0 to 6, 60 miles an hour to 0 76.6 so we move to the left a little bit it will update 77 so that's no use i'm going to come back and then we've got 77 again so if we move left 51 percent drops it down to 75.9 percent so you can adjust those slightly and look at that and it will tell you where you're going wrong then differential i always have it 50 percent front and 50 percent rear and then run the deceleration at half of that on the front and rear and then the center center diff i always run around 50 percent all the power to the front wheels and the back wheels you want all wheels working at the same time that's what you want to do because you want to drive as fast as possible you don't want to have the back wheels running because then you're a rear wheel drive car you want to have the front wheels just running because then you're a front wheel drive car you need all of them running at the same speed basically if you want more oversteer then you can push it a little bit to the rear but i don't like doing that in a race car because i don't want the back end to push out that much i want to keep as much grip as possible so you keep it as close to center as possible so that is my basic tune for an all-wheel drive grip setup that i drive around a circuit or i drive around in races in four horizon four five my bad let's just go and check the car out just lift it up look fly off the line basically no wheel spin there but i'm just driving around here not just lift it up go for a little drive just see what it looks like i mean on the manual the flat so look around i'm on full lock here and there's, there's no loss of grip whatsoever just go faster i'm just dodging around the road look left to right barely losing any grip there i mean i, I could lose a little bit of grip there because i was dodging left and right I'm flying up here at 190 miles an hour. I'm dodging left, dodging right, to the right. Put it on full lock. Well, I can't put it on full lock, there's it. To the corner, full lock. So that kept the grip. Much grip as possible. 200 miles an hour, I'm flying around these little bends. Oh, head on collision. So that is how I set a car up 
the maximum amount of grip in cornering in Forza Horizon 5. If you like that, check out my other videos.